Hey guys. <laughs> hello, I guess we're on, are we? Yeah. All right. Well, hello. Welcome back, everybody. It's Friday. We're here. Liz is gone. We're. Hey, so it's just us two, just us chickens. <laughs> but uh, we're going to do a video today about uh, skiving. And everybody always talks about the round knife, how I cut with a round knife. I'm going to cut a few things with it. To, but you know, skiving is, is basically what this is about. And we've got several different tools we're going to show you. Yeah, we got a table full of knives here because if you let me and Denny pick what we do, it's going to be sharpening knives. <laughs> yeah. And several different kinds of leather. You guys have to realize that to every piece of leather and every different type of leather is going to skive differently. So you've got to keep that in mind when, you, when you're doing your work. But uh, let's start off with a round knife here. I've got three different round knives. Before we even get going, Denny, can you apologize for the extra sound that might be in the room? I do apologize for that because we're having air Still conditioning keeps problems. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're having air conditioning problems, and uh, it's hot in here. Yeah. So we've got a portable air air unit in here that makes a little bit of noise. Yeah, if y'all can hear it, sorry about that, but yeah. it's keeping us from looking all sweaty. But anyway, or I've got just yeah, I've got some. Uh, we've got some round knives here mm -hmm. and some head knives. Uh, the main difference between a round knife and a head knife is is the size and the, the amount of arc that it has. Mm -hmm. uh, this this is an older Osborne knife, a really fine knife that, mm -hmm. that uh, we've got here. Where'd you come up with this? Victor gave it to me. Victor gave it to you. He uh, the story as it goes with this knife is it's come down through a couple people in his family, just you know, traded hands a few times, but supposedly early 1900s, and it's a beautiful old knife. Yeah, it's an old it's, Osborne it's, round knife. It's a nice old knife. It's been sharpened where it's kind of out of shape, but it's still, you put an edge on it and it, uh, it cuts nicely. But I want to tell you something about uh, vegetable tan leather. Uh, easier if it's a little bit wet, it will really? skive easier if it's a little bit wet. Hmm. You all saw me cut with that knife. I'm going to wet this a little bit. Wet both sides. Uh, yeah, the skiving control will be getting there. This yeah. is a, this will be a good one for you to watch. Yeah. But anyway. This sounds it's almost smoother. It's almost effortless when it's wet. Yeah. But the core of this leather is still dry, mm -hmm. and that's what you're hearing, that those fibers split apart when you cut it. And I've noticed just using my round knives lately, when I start a cut, I've got a lot better yeah. a lot better luck if I give it a little rock right at the start just to cut that first edge. Could just be. Get through that corner, Could be. and then I can just cruise through. Well, that time yeah. I got most of the way through. <laughs> but anyway, if you notice, this knife made no sound at all. Yep. What... You a lot of the sound you're hearing is the grind that mark. You've grind. had that on a stone. Yep. And if you polish it, it won't make any noise at all. But yeah. Anyway, it will cut a lot smoother. It will skive a lot smoother. The main thing when you're using a round knife is, is I have the heel of my hand on the table, the point of my knife, and the cutting surface. You do never you never want to let your knife right out of the cutting surface. You always want to keep your knife into the cutting surface. The minute you let it ride out, it goes wild. Yep. Why did you set that bottle up? Thank you. It goes wild. So just just keep your your knife, your the point of your knife and the cutting surface. That's the main thing. You but you can cut, you know, I I like I said, I've got the heel of my hand down on the table. And I've, I've got a good firm grip, you know, that I can control the knife. And I'm, I'm using my this thumb behind the blade. I can use it for a lot of fine control. Hmm. See that cut that I just made? You can do that with a round knife. Yeah. Not this one. But <laughs> well, you, you still have some metal sharpened bit. Yeah. But uh, this is called pattern knife. You know, it's a it's a a little bit odd shaped. You know, it's not just a straight knife. Uh, this is called a round knife because it's got a a big round blade on it. So you got this this, this little knife. This is one from Ivan that we've been selling here. Here, yeah, that over there. Yeah, 
and it's just a, a little bitty pattern knife. It'd make it good. It'd be good for long straight cuts, you know? Yep. And this one, I, I love this knife. I've been doing some projects lately where I just do one knife for the entire project. And I mean, this knife can do it all for me, especially for the price I'm happy with it. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's all I think we need to cover on this for, for cutting with the round knife. Yeah. But let's talk about Sky, but let me get rid of this cutting board. Wait, I got you. When you're skiving, you always want to skive. The best thing to skive on is a piece of glass, to tell you the truth. But I don't have a piece of glass in here. I have one on my bench, but this piece of granite will work well. But uh, there again, <clears throat> you will skive much easier if your leather is, is wet. So you don't want to just try to bulldoze with the round knife. You don't want to just cut straight on. If your knife is sharp, you can, but basically you just want to slice the leather off. Hmm. And I can skive this down to a feather edge, a knife edge, actually. I don't know if you can see the, the edge that I got here. Yeah. A little bit far away. Far away. Like this. Okay, so I'll zoom in. You'll just be right there over your yeah. knife. Yeah, but you can see that nothing to it. That's just a sharp edge there. Let it dry. I'll cut something. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's with the leather wet. Now let me get a piece of this dry. It will sky, but it doesn't sky nearly as easy. It's it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to control your knife than a piece of dry uh, vegetable tan leather. So what are you doing to get stability on your knife because I notice I'll rock around a lot when I'm trying to do it. Well, if you'll see here, I've, I've got it like this with two fingers, uh -huh. two fingers actually on the blade. Finger each side of center. Okay. Yes. Edge a little different angle yeah. here. So yeah. yeah. You're trying to cut like this. You need to cut like this. Ah. Twice. Right. So you're pushing almost yes. past the edge. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm actually slicing that gotcha. leather off. I'm not bulldozing. I got you. You're pushing through that edge. Yeah. Now you don't want to do what I did. Cut through your leather all the way. Yeah. Uh, well, you can, you but, know. <laughs> generally, you it. it's very possible. Generally, when you're skiving something to a feather edge, yeah. it, it will be inside of another piece. You won't see that edge. And you're going to end up with a little bit of the variation there on, the, on your edge. Yeah. You this know, it's going to be visible. You definitely want to be careful enough that you don't do that. Yeah, if you're doing a rolled edge or something. Yeah. Yeah, this little guy I've got a lot more practice with, so I can do my running skives with it like so, or just come in like, I use a lot for wallet pockets, just skiving those T pockets down. Yeah. Bring them in, and I, I really enjoy this little guy. Now, when, if an oil tan leather is going to cut and skive a lot different than a, than a vegetable tan leather, generally it's a bit easier to skive mm -hmm. because it's got some lubrication in the fibers, whereas the, the uh, vegetable tan leather is dry. That's why you, when you wet it, it skives easier. You know what I just realized, Denny? What's that? I was trying to... Skive on the same edge like you were. Mm -hmm. You're left-handed. <laughs> I had to skive on the other edge. Yeah, that's true. And I'm, yep. I'm getting a much there you better. Go. Yeah, now just slice that off. Much better there result you go. here. There you are. Bye. So oh, if you're yeah. if you're right-handed, skive over on the left side of your yeah. piece. If you're left-handed, skive over on the right side of your yeah. piece. Yeah. If you're watching this video, just stand on your head. That'll help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now see, you can skive. You can skive both sides. But this, this is the natural side that I would be skiving on. Right. From the left-handed. But I can also skive on this side. Just a little easier on that one side. Yeah, yeah. you've just got to cross your body to do that. Yep. Okay. That's enough said about a round knife. You know, the main thing is don't bulldoze it. You're trying to slice that off. Yep. Uh, okay, we've got another type of a, a skiver here. This, What do you call this? I think that's it's not a safety skyber, is it? 
I think that's the super skyver. Super skyver. Yeah, super skyver. Yeah. Now a lot of people wonder how to skive the end of a belt off to thin it down. You can use this tool here. This is a tool you've got to be careful with because you can get in trouble with it. Yep. But it does skive. It skives nicely. Let's see. Yeah, uh, salty. You're you're absolutely right. I I definitely need some practice on that. Uh, but yeah, the the smaller knife, aimless. This is the Ivan mini round knife. Uh, I I love this thing. I think it's like twenty bucks. Doesn't come with a handle on it, so you got to make a handle. But take half hour, and you're good. Yeah. We got uh, Columbia checking. Not, not, right. not Columbia. 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 The country. Not the country. The country not, not this. The city. Not the city yep. in Missouri. The little mini knife that Ryan had, we had them in the stock for about a week. Yep. So we're down to zero again. Every time we stock them up, they sell out fast. But if you see here, I've skived probably a third of that leather off. Enough for a turn back. Yeah, but you, but you know, if you want more, just be careful and skive a little more. Yeah, those things I never could get the hang yeah. of. Uh, I just come in here and use our bench, bench splitter. <laughs> yeah, I don't use it a lot, but to... What I do use, and I'm going to show you right now, mm -hmm. is this little safety skiver. Now I've got this one, I have actually cut the end of it and switched it to the other end of this handle because I'm left handed. And, yep. and this is one tool that you that is almost impossible to use with the, with the opposite hand. Yep. But uh, it works very well. And I can use it like this, you see. Uh, Dean, if you're running into stuff that you're finding your knife just is button up against, the only thing I've found that helps me is just getting it sharp, really practicing that edge. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work keeping knives like this sharp with their weird shapes. You see what I've done there with this little safety skiver. Same thing. It works well. You can skive an edge with it. He did a lot faster than you did with your... Super Skyver too. Yeah. And that's saying there's the tools Denny's practiced with and the tools he knows how to use but doesn't use every day. Right. But this is a good tool. I've used it a lot. Yeah. When I was making saddles, I used to use it to shape my ground seats with. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. I started off using the, the guy that uh, I apprenticed to used a heel shape. He had a set of six or seven, and I have a set that are for sale, by the way. What are those? <laughs> They're called a heel shave. It's a bootmaker's tool. Hmm. But uh, I don't know. I should have brought them with me. I might have to I talk to you about you. those. Yeah. They're for sale. Yep. Well, I just <laughs> I just got my boot lasts in over the weekend. So. <laughs> but anyway, that's we've covered the round knife and the, and the head knife, and we've covered the safety skiver and the super skiver. Both your safety skiver and super skiver are uh, razor blades. Yeah, they... They so have just replaceable blade, replaceable blades. Uh, but if you will, if you will uh, strop the blades, yep. and that's something we need to talk about too, you will strop these blades. They get better with use. Yes. The only thing that makes them bad is if you get a nick in. When you first put a fresh blade in one of these, strop it. Yeah. Uh, it'll fight you and chatter really bad until you strop it and get that yeah. polish. But but you can set it on the on your strop. Just drop it like this. Oh, nice. Looks like Michael's saying that uh, Clay Miller's making a left handed safety skiver. All right. So All right. There we go. I need to talk to Clay Miller. <laughs> okay. Next, what have we got? Uh, let's see. We got Japanese knives. Yeah. Japanese Why don't you style skivers. That? All right. That's, that's your knife of expertise. So, this is, yeah, this is the type of skiver I use a lot more than the others. Uh, it's the Japanese skiver. Um, they are a Kind of a chisel. Uh, so you can see here just one edge is beveled, the other edge is flat. And you keep this thing a high polish. Because again, there's there's sharpness, but then there's polish, and that polish makes a difference. Uh, these are a good utility knife. I love them. Yeah, show them this one. This yeah. one is very similar. It's so this exactly is a, the same idea. An Ivan one, same concept. The way Ivan does theirs, you can see it's got a double bevel, so you've got your cutting edge and then your writing bevel. But again, flat on the back. Uh, and then you've got an angled Japanese Skyver. Same concept, though. 
from Hicks Custom. Hicks should be in here. Yeah, Hicks should be here. Uh, he made this one stellar little, stellar little skyver. But same idea, one big bevel, flat back. Yeah, and it's it's angled. You get four it left hand. It was the only left handed one that he had. Yep, I've got a couple right handed angled ones. Uh, so these guys, again, I do a lot of wallets and bags. Uh, but you skive with the bevel down on these because that is going to be really stable. I'm just putting pressure on it. It sits at the edge. Now, obviously, when you put pressure, don't put it in front of the blade like I had there. But just behind it. And again, work at a little bit of an angle. And just give it a little push. And you just take little bites out and just work your way through. This is, of course, making me look You're bad. slicing. Yep, but you slice with it. So I always think like I'm twisting it slightly. Uh, just a little bit like that. Let me grab a piece of veg here. And they work great for those end skives. Uh, there we go. That one got a good bite. And then your edge skives, same thing. You can come in here, just hold at an angle, and you can see it's moving slowly up the blade as I go because you just let it, let it slice. And on this, I put it slightly uh, into my cut. And I've, I've had a good, good experience with using them that way. Uh, I, I think they're just fantastic little knives. I bought a few cheapos that I fixed up and would rather have just bought a nice one. But then again, this one's stellar. It's one uh, Anderson made himself out of an old uh, farrier file. Um, and just fantastic. They're also really easy to sharpen. Because when you go to sharpen these, like if they need some work, put them on your whetstone, just hold them at that angle. Don't let it, don't let it bounce. Yeah. Just one wanna, bevel. You don't want it. You just want a long, smooth bevel. Yep. And on the back, I just lay it flat on my whetstone. Let me find a good edge for you. Lay it flat on my whetstone and pull it like that just to get the burr off the just back. The wire edge, yeah. Yep. Same thing when you're stropping it. Let me show them this one, this yeah. uh, angled left-hander that, uh, that Hicks made me. Here, let's switch our Denny's camera. I use it the same way, but just remember you want to slice with this knife. Uh, you use yours bevel side down, Denny? Bevel side down, yes. yes. Yep. Uh, the uh, crystal, the left and right handed knives, that's only going to come into play when there is an angle. So the one I was using is straight across, but Denny's here you can see is about a it's 20 it. degree angle on it. Uh, at the tip, so just the orientation of that edge. Mine's perpendicular. His is yeah, just yeah. off. Now I've skived. I've skived the right hand. I'm left-handed. Yep. with This left-handed knife, and I've skived the, the right hand side of this. Yeah. This strap. If I want to skive the other side, I've got to turn it around. Yep. And I can skive the other side of this strap. Same way. These are also really good trim knives if you've got yeah. multiple layers put together because you've got that flat back. So again, if I'm making wallets, I will, you know, all your pockets in different layers end up slightly unjogged. And I'll just hold this vertical and just chop that edge down. And you get a nice yeah. flat edge. Yeah. Cleans everything right up. But if you're gonna bevel straight across the strap, yep. you just you just kind of want to start and just slice into the edge, just kind of edge, inch your way through it. Yep. That, that's the thing with these knives, is if you're end skiving, it's little bites. You start somewhere and just take it easy. Yep. Don't take too big a bite at one time. There you go, bulldozing. Yep. Now we're back to slicing. <laughs> and yeah, these knives, you can feel it. If Keep you just try to toe. push, they don't move. <laughs> Well, that's, that's when you overwork yourself and, and don't do a good job. Let right. the edge of the knife do your, do your work. Or cut yourself. Because yeah. fighting a knife is how it gets out of control. When, you, when you're cutting, if your knife isn't cutting right, there's, there's two things that's wrong, that yep. could be wrong. Number one and foremost and usual is you're using the knife wrong. Yep. And number two is you need to sharpen it or strop it. Right. Nine times out of ten, you will strop your knife really good. You will end up with a much nicer cut out of it. Yeah. Uh, the safety skyver, will you strop the blade again? 
Will I? Sure. Nope. No, I don't take it out. If it gets to where you, where you can't to cut with it anymore, or if you get little nicks in it, change the blade. But strop yep. that blade before you ever put it in. Yep. Or before you ever we've use got, it either way. Yeah. We've got a, a, a grinder wheel. Oh, yeah, I forgot to bring that in. Yeah. Oh. That uh, you can put this blade in a pair of pliers or vice yep. grips or something and, and strop both sides of it good before you ever put it in. So we've got a, a bench grinder that we've got a cotton wheel on that we just hit with the jeweler's rouge just like you would your strop and you can just run right up. Do what? Nothing. Okay. Thanks for the uh, let's see. Yeah, it's the, the little bites are always nice. This thing, for, for an inexpensive tool, it's the best tool in your toolbox, I think. Yeah, yeah there for myself. Time. Will you shine that one more time? Yes, I will. Are you ready? Yeah. If you want to just thin the leather down like you're going to do a, a turn back on a belt. See, that's what I never can do with those things. Yeah, just backwards on the strop. Uh, yeah, you don't want to strop into the blade, into the edge. Right. Uh, you'll see, I mean, well, my strop, I resurfaced it recently, but you get a little, a lot of little cuts and nicks on your strop. Uh, once it starts to get rough, like I've got the flush side and the grain side to my paddle here, so my grain side will get cuts and nicks on it. I just take some, like, 400 to 600 grit sandpaper, nothing crazy. And just sand it. Smooth it I still end up with a nice smooth side and a rough side for when a little more work needs done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, sand off those cuts and scratches and keep clean rouge on it. These are French edgers. The ones I've got on my stone. Oh yeah. French oh, edgers. There's one. It's a little guy. There's a big uh, one. There's a big one. I'm trying to figure out what knife crystal is talking about. That's show, show her how to use, how to do a straight blade. Are you talking about the Japanese knife crystal? This guy? Uh, this will be recorded, uh, Holt Family Hardwoods. Uh, it on, should be... It's on YouTube. Yeah, it should be right if you on YouTube as soon as we're done. Uh, and you should be able to rewind now back to the beginning if you want. But these straight ones, same deal like Denny was saying, bevel down, you can slice your edge bevels off, or you can come in here and just little bites. I don't know why I'm doing this on chrome tan every time. Thanks, sir. Bevel side down. Bevel side down. And this one, I've always got better luck with these on veg than I do on chrome. But just... Little bites. There we go. Now I'm cutting. And they, they work great. Uh, you can hear that sound of hitting the marble. That's why I use marble or glass instead of cutting board. So I'm not digging into my yeah. board. This, yeah. you'll just hit it and you won't hit that tip. Yeah, it'll it'll ride off. It'll hang off. Skip on right off. Smooth surface. Uh, glass is better because it, yeah. it's a lot smoother. And you're less likely to scratch it and chip yeah. it up than you are yeah. granite. On your, on your safety skyver, did you bend? No, them. that's how they that's are. How came. Yep. I know Don Gonzalez was doing a video about like changing the angle of it. Yeah. And it was helpful to him, but uh, Amos Chrome Tan versus Veg, it's just playing with it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of differences, and like when you're you know trying to explain difference between cut and Herman Oak and cut and import, you just got to feel it. Um, mm -hmm. Once you get it in under an eye, you'll notice. It, every piece of leather is different. Yep. Different parts of a hide are going to sky differently. You get down on the belly, they're going to sky fairly easy. You get up on the back and the down at the butt on the back, it's going to get really dense. Yeah. And that's when you need to wet the leather, if it's especially if it's a vegetable tan. Well, like this but, buffalo, yeah, yeah, scouts easy. Yeah. But okay, now I've got these two French edgers here, and you can sky with them. Wayne had a question, and I can help him. This one. He was asking, Denny, do you strop all your blades, including razor blades? If it is sharp, Denny strops it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if it's got an edge, yeah. strop it. 
Stop it because a, a factory sharp edge will be sharpened on a grinder nine times out, ninety nine times out even of the, even the punches, the punches that come yeah. from off, yep. they yeah. they come uh, they come sharpened, but you don't really need sharpen because as soon as you put it through and hit it in a cutting board, it's no longer sharp. Yeah. You just need a polish. Yep. Yeah. Plus, plus, especially a punch, they will grind that around and around yeah. to to make that taper. The grind marks are. Going, around around. going horizontally, and you, yeah. and you want them vertically, so so you got to strop that off. It'll make it cut a hundred times better. And uh, to, edge bevelers, little piece of string with jewelers on it. Yeah. So you strop those. Yeah, yeah Wayne, we talked about that before. Uh, uh, wetting your leather, especially on a bench plane, is going to help with cutting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're having trouble with a piece of edge stand, wet it. If you get it wet all the way through, it will cut so much nicer. If you get it just wet on the surface, it will cut till you get to that dry part and then you're gonna have trouble again. Yes, it'll cut a little nicer. Yeah, <laughs> but let me show you on this French edge. You can, you can edge on the side of a leather like that. You can also edge out in the middle to actually thin this whole piece down. Again, this is vegetable tan. If I wet this leather, it will cut so much smoother, but I'm going to show you dry. Yep, that it can be done. So those, you can't just dig into the middle right away, right? You've got to build that first edge bevel in. You can, you can yeah, you can just start out okay. in the middle. Yeah. Well, geez. See, I'm here to learn, too. <laughs> See, the, the thing is, the leather is softer than the steel, so you can actually... That push this sense. below the surface and actually take the leather out right in the center. There's some of those bead gouges and stuff like that. Say if you want to have like a binding on the book, you need to cut out the middle. Yeah, right. You can use a, a V gouge to get started or yep. or a, a stitch groover. That yep. works too. Anything to, to get you a starting point. You get a starting point, yeah. But anyway, these two, these two edge bevelers are, they both work the same way. One just a bigger size than the other. Yep. Let me show you one other skiving tool. Oh, yeah, uh, sandpaper on a round file will be great if you need to hog off some material on your edgers. Like if you really got to reprofile them. But for uh, stropping, just use the string and rouge because you don't want to actually be removing metal too much. Dean, with the, with the safety skiver, the blade is in the tool, the blade, your razor blade is in the safety skyver and you just pull it away from the blade on the straw. And you just work your way across, you know, I have your tool, will you put that safety skyver up real quick? So it's, it's got that angle on it and you do it, as you move across the straw, you just change the angle to get the blade to lay flat the straw. Yeah, yeah. it just, let me, let me show you, you got a good picture of it here. Uh, turn, can you diagonal the other way? What do you mean diagonal the other way? What's your strop at this camera? There you go. Okay. Now look, I'm going to start at, at this front edge, but as I go, I'm just going to rock it. So I'm actually skyping the whole edge of this blade. And right now, if you were to pull, he'd cut open his nice fancy yeah. strop. Yeah, see, this blade is only, what, an inch and three quarter, maybe two inches long? So you don't have far to go, but just keep stropping on it. The more you strop it, the better it'll get. Cuts, it. it cuts like a razor. Duh. Weird. Okay, there's one other skiving tool. Huh. My pocket knife. Yeah, this one I'm excited to see. So as opposed to all our other skivers where you're pushing, you're pulling on this one. I guess the razor skivers you pull as well, but now I don't use my pocket knife to skive. But if I was in the wilderness and Doing I needed pinch. to skive down a piece of seal hide, I would use my pocket knife. That's what I had. <laughs> yep. If I was in the wilderness and needed to make a rolled edge on my shelter. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, so there's a lot of 
different knives too that you can skive with just about anything. We've got a couple knives here that uh, Hicks sent us to play with and test out. This is a uh, newer design he's working on. Oh, sorry. Uh, he doesn't want me to play with a uh, top camera. Oh, that one works too. Uh, so Hicks sent me this one. It's a fun little knife. This one I have enjoyed uh, doing a lot of my long straight cuts with because you can get up up on them really well. Just zoom through. And there's these little guys too that are almost like a half a round knife or something. And it's great for little little edge skives and such as well. Just whoop. Well that one's left handed so I'll give it to you. <laughs> so I say this one's left handed because it's flat on one side and beveled on the other and on the direction I can't use it. Well trust me I can see it over there. It's cool. What do you want to see? Uh, Denny's block. Yep. So there's these little guys. And they're, they're great little cutting knives too. Uh, they're a lot of fun. So Hicks, thanks for sending these along. They're beautiful, these handles. Yeah, they're, they're fun knives. But they cut. This yeah. would be a, a good harness maker's knife. I mean, it would... Yeah, I don't have a pound of under the board. But it, it cuts smoothly. Oh yeah. You know, make make nice long straight cuts. But yep. Wouldn't be very good for a lot of curves. Right, right. And yeah, these are. I mean, there's a thousand more knives you can play with. We didn't. Just, what is this guy here? Yeah. This is a little Ivan knife that we've got. Uh, yeah. It's a French skyper, right? I think is what yeah. we call that. Or is this the French skyper? I can never remember. I don't know. I use this just as a straight knife. Oh yeah. But it, it will skive also, you know. Of course, I'm left-handed, so if I'm going to skive with it, bevel sides down, I've got to skive away from myself. Yes. But it skives nicely. You try it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give that one a shot. I got a piece of buffalo here. It's, it makes me look good. I bell down. I'm going to skive towards myself. I don't care for that as much. That's odd. But it... It goes. Try and get where y'all can see something there. It'll sky. That's yeah. That's one I've not ever touched, so that's interesting. But as far as just cutting goes, let's see where that poly run off to. These are great for doing cuts because I like to hold a knife like this, almost like a pencil. Just come in here and get all the cuts you need. But this one we haven't put as much love into as our other knives, so it's not as Razor sharp, but I, it's still good and sharp. I use this on my bench daily. Oh, really? Just, just as a straight. Knife. I just don't yeah. know what I'm doing with it. Yeah. You just use yeah. it for cutting like that. Yeah, yeah but here you go. Take that so your poly don't slide around on you. Yeah. So here's someone who knows how to use it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that over there. Yeah. Up, oh, up top. But it just it cuts nicely. Unzips it. Yeah. That's great. Um, I know we that brown tool that's there would be close to the the French. Uh, that's a French edger, right? This these guys. Yep. Yeah. Those yeah. Are, those are French French edgers. edgers. Uh, let's see. Michael Seeger's having a question about. Not, are they sharp out of the box? Probably, but they're not polished out of the box. Yep. The main. The, I'll tell you the main problem with with most of these knives out of the box. Let me use this as a pointer. Yep. This edge and this edge are generally too thick. Those but rails. When you're trying, yeah, yeah, the two rails. So I always put mine on a grinder and thin them way down. You see how thin these two rails are on each side. Yeah, there's barely anything there. Yeah. Because when you're skiving on an edge, if that's real thick, you can't get down to the, you can't get down to your surface. That space your blade is away yeah. from your surface. Yeah. Yeah. And also, the bevel, the bevel right here on the inside is generally pretty steep. Really? Yeah, and that's hard to get away from. This knife is probably 35 years old, and I've worked, and I've worked, and I've worked, you know, trying to... About the most polished knife I've ever seen. Yeah, and it gets better and better and better, you know. But if you will also notice, the edge of the blade is not perfectly straight. It's starting to take... A, yeah, curve those just years because of, I've stropped it so much. Yeah, same way with this one. Now, how do you fact, strop one, one of those? Uh, 
Okay. I'll just take it and drag it backwards. Oh, all right. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Very straightforward. Uh, let's see. And on the it? wheel, I can t I can take take it on a wheel and, and put it to... Get the inside of it? Yeah, and get the inside of it, too. Uh, although Fear was asking about the knife, I think he was talking about the angled French, the French angled trim knife. Yeah, the trim knife there? Yeah. That guy? Yeah. Uh, I think, There's yeah, usually trim knife, you'll see that. Uh, let's see, Hicks knives are Texas. Uh, he makes them down in Texas. Uh, handmade knives. Uh, beautiful knives, beautiful handles. Really comfortable handles, too. I like them. Yeah. I've got his business what card. Was he Did he sharpen and strop new knives before, SL, before he sent them out for delivery? $10,000. I say enough for a day to retire. <laughs> Steal. Enough for a day to retire off the first one he does. I don't know. If you if you bought a knife, I would do what I can with it, but I, you know. We should offer, we should offer a service. Uh -uh. It's called come in and take Denny's class and then bring your tools that need sharpening and he'll help you out with it. There you go. Yep. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, you know, people all the time are buying knives and, and I, I try to sharpen them for them. You know, there are some knives, go ahead. entry level type Knives are hard to get sharp and usable. Yes. You know, when you when you get into a custom-made knife or something, uh, a high-end type knife, they've generally got a pretty good bevel on them to begin with, yep. you know, and, and all it takes is just a little bit of finish work on them. And the, the quality and temper of your metal, too. Yeah. Uh, your but yeah, steel you, on this little Ivan knife, I've got to strop this about every two cuts. If you want to buy a knife, and have them bring it back to me. I will do the best I can to get it sharp for you. There you go, folks. And I won't charge you anything, but I expect you to come in and spend millions of dollars in our store. Um, and sit there and pay attention while he's doing it so you yeah. can do it yourself. Yeah. A, a lot of these knives are dual use. You could use this to, to sky, or you could use it to cut. Yep. Sure. So find out which one kind of works the best for you. Mm -hmm. Like even with a scalpel or an exacto knife, yep. the purpose really of the bolt of them are both the same. Which one feels more comfortable in your hand? Yep. And use that one and be, become an expert at that tool. Yeah, that's well, and and yeah. those those like scalpels and and exactos are made for fine, delicate work. Mm -hmm. If you get into a heavy piece of leather, doing doing long cuts with it, uh, they aren't going to do you very well. Take you all day to get through yeah. skirting. Well, you, you will. <laughs> For one thing, you'll probably break a scalpel blade yep. or break an exacto blade, yep. you know, because they aren't made for that heavy, heavy work. They're made for a light leather. Right. So, and uh, Chris, I saw your question a little earlier here. Uh, round knives are never going to be right or left-handed. Nope. The symmetrical ones are symmetrical, even if they're asymmetrical blades, like Denny's little pattern knife. Yeah. Uh, this one. They're still beveled on both sides. Yeah. So you're good. Yeah. Can you explain the difference in grinding a knife, for example, hollow ground? Uh, it, it really makes no difference on, on the edge itself, you know, because the hollow grind is before the edge. Right. You know, the the bevel on the blade is, is makes the edge, so if it's hollow ground, it would... It'd have like a... The belly to it before yeah, the edge. It, it would be it would be ground like this and like this, but then your bevel would go like this. Uh, Mike, yeah, you're right. Osborne doesn't sharpen them as sharp as they used to. They get a good edge put on them, but there's yeah, there's some work to be done uh, once you get them. Uh, but yeah, with the grind on skiving knives, especially anything I intend to use for skiving, I just do a single bevel. So. Like this uh, Japanese sky where you can see it really easy. There's no no cutting edge and bevel. It's just the one long bevel. Because uh, I don't want anything trying to redirect my hand. And when you're skiving, those little changes in angle of your bevel will change the angle of your knife. Yeah, if you want to know more about like the holograms and... Call Chris. And, and things like that, there's a show this week, uh, <laughs> this weekend happening down in Atlanta called Blade. They will answer all your night questions and probably more information than you even want to know. Yeah. They 
they all have a purpose. They serve a purpose. Marking the spine and keeping other parts up, or keeping the yep. spine soft, things like that. Depending right. on what you're doing, yeah. if you're not if you're making a chopper, if you're making a slicer. Yeah, it's you know, it's a big difference. The main thing in any of these blades, hollow ground, straight ground, ground, uh, single bevel, double bevel, if they aren't sharp, they aren't going to work. Yep. You know. It, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, Michael. If you sharpen your belt punches, your end punches, and stuff like that, if there's a sharp, if you're sharpening, you're driving it straight down into a piece of poly. It's going to be sharp one time. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just hammer it into the poly, and now it's no longer yeah. sharp. You can get a lot of good mileage out of uh, stropping your punches. Yeah. Uh, I, I strop all my round punches and belt punches and stuff. Yeah, strop, strop them for sure. We've got those new uh, kind of flexible see-through cutting punching mats. Those things I found do not dull my punches near oh, as bad yeah. as poly. What are we Self healing? Something like that. I think a lot of places you'll see them called like tendon mats, something like that. We have three in stock, so it seems like they're popular. Yeah, they're going quick. Yep. They're another one that just, I don't know, I'm over the moon with those. But yeah, if you've got a punching cutting tool that needs sharpened up, you know, needs a new edge put on it, just take time and sit down and study how that edge is, and then sit down at a belt or a bench oh, grinder. Oh, so punching and cutting tool. Here, I'll post the link. There, there we go. That thing I found my my edges last a lot longer on my punching tools. And if you need a, if you need that board back up, then it just feels it's the deep cuts back out of it or like the surface cuts. Haven't tried that yet myself. No. Uh, but I do know I don't care for cutting on it personally. Just it's really grippy. But you uh, punch but on punching it. on it absolutely wonderful. So it just kind of goes in that spot, and then you pull it back out, and kind of just pulls it back up. Or what? Yep. Yeah, you'll you'll still be able to see it, but there's not really a lot of texture to it. Yeah, um, not like you would with that whiteboard yeah. anyhow. And if I've got to punch some holes with my leather, you know, grain side down, that's not going to chew up the grain of my leather like a poly will. Uh, I really enjoy them, especially I use the French stitching irons a lot. Uh, and those things are a great way to... Poly's a great way to break those. <laughs> is there any way to smooth out the inside of a punch? I can sharpen the outside, yep. but I have... The really tend to get clogged up and feel a little rough now. I the round jeweler's file. Yep. I've got a little diamond hunting file. It's cone shaped. Uh, yeah. Just get in there and knock that burr off and you're good. I think still we even on. I think we even sell conical stones. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You're still still it's it's punch. You still don't want to sharpen your punch. The thing about a punch, if you get too long too steep of a bevel, yep. it's gonna your yeah, edge is gonna, your punch. edge is gonna roll. Yeah. So that you want a really short bevel on a punch. You want they a have little, they have a little cone thing that you can stick and you can sharpen. I've seen it on Facebook, but you're changing you're changing the, the Yeah, it'll get bigger every time you use it. Yep, your half inch is now going to be, you know, uh, nine eights. nine sixteenths. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You're just gonna keep on making it yeah. bigger and bigger. Yeah. Well that's the way with any tool, you know. This this round knife well, started out quite a bit bigger than than yeah. it is now. Just yeah. Just because I've stropped it so often. Well, that French edge that you have where you're yeah. on the... Yeah. That's no longer... It's got a belly off. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, yeah, this is the uh, this is the Ivan mini round knife. And this is just a handle I slapped on there. I think we have a video. It's actually uh, on the Trump Haven website, too. Oh, nice. nice. Cool picture of it. Yeah, it's just a couple burr rivets, a couple stacked pieces of edge in different colors. Did you guys do a video on it? Uh, I think, yeah, we did a video on making this handle, and that's, I had never touched the knife before we did a, made, a video making the handle, and yeah. by the end of the process, I ended up buying the knife because I liked it so much. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. You just got to think about it, like, it, would you take a Phillips head screwdriver and just pound it into the concrete? Sure. But it like that screwdriver. Before. And when you I'm... expect it to work the same way every time? <laughs> right. Oh. So the punch, the punch is the same way. It's not designed to be super sharp. Yeah, it's yeah. not, because that is something that you do bulldoze through the leather. That's right. You're going straight through it, you aren't slicing through it. That's why you don't use a little four ounce yeah. poly right. ball to yeah. hammer, or mallet to hammer. Yeah. You use, use something with some weight behind it. Yeah, on, on a very solid surface. If you notice on our website, we call them drive punches. 
Yeah. Because you're driving it through the leather. But I do, I do always give all my punches a little polish. Uh, it's like we were saying, those grind marks, they'll slow you down. The grind marks what? are the sharpen. The polish marks are what you want. Yeah, yes. and what happens when when those grind marks are still there, you can't get your punch out of the leather. Yep. If you have it polished nice, it'll just pop back out. Yep. Yeah, if you're and pushing back and forth to get it out, yeah. you yeah. probably need a little polish on it. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got, folks. Demo on the head knife. Uh, basically the same as the round knife, uh, but we can... So I was asking for a quick demo on the head knife, but I think... Head knife works the same as a round knife. Yeah. Same as, you know, they're all the same. Yep. Well, let me just use this one. Yeah, it's... When you're cutting, the, the straighter the line, that if I'm going to cut this line right here, mm -hmm. I can get a lot of blade in, in the leather. I can hold my knife up yep. like this and get a lot of blade in it. You know, and I've got a lot of stability as far as that kind of stuff goes. Now, if I'm going to cut this curve, I want to get back on the tip of my knife. I want to, yep. I want the heel of this knife almost touching the table because so, I don't want a lot of blade in, in the Stop way. just a second. Oh, go turn it just a little bit and go get ready to cut, it, but don't start cutting it. Keep turning. No, no, no. Turn your, uh, turn your leather. So I want to see your thumb. The, your thumb that's not... Oh, important. I see. Yeah. I see. That's where your, your okay. push is coming from. Yeah. And it's gentle. Yeah, you're not trying to just jam it. Otherwise, you're going to jam it through your finger. Yep. Yeah. How many times have you cut yourself with a round knife, Denny? I've never cut myself cutting with a round knife. <laughs> I have... Yeah, I have had it on the table and reached to grab something else and nicked myself with right. it, but I've never <laughs> cut myself. I because dropped it, one and it cut me on the way yeah, down. Yeah, stay behind the blade. Don't, yep. don't get in front of the blade. Uh, Christina, on the Japanese uh, knife angles, I have no idea. Um, Hicks would be a great person to ask. Yeah, Hicks would be a good guy to ask. Uh, um, let me see if I can. Uh, I had his business. I have his business card. Yeah, he sent me a little stack bench, of them. But, uh, he sent me a stack of one of those knives. But I love this knife, this little green handled knife. I'd never used it before. Oh, a couple of weeks ago when I started using it, and now I use it a lot. Yeah, they're great knives. Uh, good utility knife, like I said. They can do everything but a nice long cut. <laughs> but trim up and skiving, I love these guys. Uh, let's see, anybody else? Tools are generally designed for one purpose, but you can use them for hundreds. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think the round knife is a really good example of that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's many tools that I've got that are great at one thing and all right at everything else. Uh, but that's why I end up with a giant tote bag I haul into work every day with all my tools. Yeah. Hold on, I'm trying to find, I can find it in a minute. If everybody hangs on Twitch, I'll find Hicks with the page and I'll share it. Yeah, he just made a new one. And you might have to get that for him. There we go. All right. Anything else? Uh, about all I can think to say about these things. Have fun. Practice. Uh, and then practice some more. And then a little more. <laughs> Polish. Polish. Yeah. yeah. Just, be... just keep trying, you guys. I mean, yep. skiving is something that's... You cannot read a book or listen to someone and learn how to skive. Right. You've got to put a knife in a piece of leather and, and start doing it. I think the biggest uh, thing to just keep in mind when you're using any sort of skiving tool, uh, the knife will only cut at the angle the blade is at. So this one has a really shallow angle, so if I hold it up high, it's not going to skive or cut at all, hardly. If I hold it down low, well, it's not going to hit the leather. Same thing with my round knives, your head knives, your French edgers. There's the angle the blade is at, and that's the angle it cuts at. Um, and I'm not speaking, you know, as far as how steep your bevel is, but just what angle you're holding it into the leather. It only cuts at that angle. So get familiar with your tools, get to know them, spend some time polishing them, and you'll get a lot more familiar with that angle. Slice, don't plow. Yep. And little bites with your Japanese editor, or for skivers. Yeah, I think that's, that's what we've got for today, folks. Uh, we appreciate you all coming in. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Enjoy yourselves this weekend. See next again. week. Next oh. week. What are we doing? I think. I don't know. I'm not here. You're not here? Well, I think Liz had like a an owl with the cabochon. I'm not sure. You're certainly working on it. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking she said. 
Yep. Yep. Cool. So next week, Wednesday and Friday, is working on a tooled owl with some stone inlays. So it should be a fun one. You get to see some tooling on camera this time? I guess. Yep. I guess. We're doing it in two it, days. You got it scheduled for two days. Yeah. Yep. So this will be Denny on camera tooling, folks. I know everybody likes that. So Tooling something that I'm not real good at. <laughs> so yeah, Luckily, this the owl's not flying. It's just yeah. sitting on so, a branch. All right. All right, everybody. Have a good one. See you next week.